Greetings, everyone. This is Collectible Sephoria to present the Aladdin Deluxe Doll gift set by the Disney Store, which was released as part of the Diamond Edition release this year of the classic animated film Aladdin. As a collector of all the Deluxe Doll gift sets, as a completist, and as a longtime fan of this film, this set is a must-have for me since the nostalgia factor is what really attracts me the most to it. This will be a two-part video review, with the first one focused on Aladdin and Jasmine's doll and their outfits, while the second video will be focused on the genie, Jafar, Raja, and Abu. I will post the link in the description box below once the second video is available. Stay tuned! Aladdin is one of Disney's iconic musical fantasy film released in 1992 and was the most successful film of that year. In honor of its glorious history since its debut, Disney released a deluxe doll gift set which consists of all the characters that brought about the success of this animated film. This set includes Aladdin, Jasmine, Genie, originally voiced by the late Robin Williams, Jafar, as well as Raja and Abu. It also comes with Jasmine's two other outfits as seen in the film and a mannequin stand. Packaging comes in a long indigo colored with gold accents rectangular box which comprises the classic dolls as well as the pets and inclusions. The design patterns are Arabian inspired with Disney and Aladdin's official logo visible in the front of the box an Aladdin Deluxe doll gift set right below it. On the back shows screen images of each of the characters included and a note regarding all the inclusions of this set. Right inside the box shows background image of the city of Agrabah at sunset. This set retailed at $79.95 US dollars and $87.95 Canadian dollars. Jasmine stands at about 11.5 inches mark and Aladdin at 12.5 inches. Starting off with the main character, Aladdin wears a small fez hat which has a cardinal red color to it. The sculpted details on the hair are intricately detailed and the entire head sculpt is actually molded from the limited edition dolls released previously, making all the head sculpt details a better upgrade in terms of replicating his on-screen appearance. The eyes are side glancing to the left, the eyebrows are defined, and he has a slight smirk on his face. The only thing disconcerting here is his facial expression which doesn't clearly portray what expression he is trying to give off since with a combination of the eyes and lips paintwork, the facial expression seems detached. The sculpted details on his chest and abs are decent, opting for a minimal look which actually works best in this figure. If I will be nitpicky here, his facial skin tone as well as his body skin tone seem slightly mismatched, which make him appear like he is wearing foundation on his face. His skin tone though is slightly darker in shade than the previously released doll, which I actually much preferred since the yellowish skin tone from the previous doll doesn't give him justice. He wears his peasant outfit, which is captured perfectly here. The outfit is exactly the same material and sewn details from the satin fabric and color selection used to all the stitching details which I don't have any complaint about since if it ain't broke, don't fix it. He wears a simple purple vest and a white harem trousers, capturing his baggy long pants caught in at the ankle correctly. The vest can also be easily removed and replaced back. I also like the attached yellow patch with the stitching details on it, which is on-screen accurate. The sewn details on his belt are also nicely executed, 
though I wish they could have gone with a darker yellow gold color to replicate the exact shade seen in the movie. The pants can be removed with a velcro attachment on the back. Aladdin is also barefooted as also seen in the movie itself. Moving onwards, Jasmine's physical appearance is perfectly captured with her beautiful Arabian light skin tone, long lustrous black hair, big brown eyes, though the lip color is purplish pink in color, and a distinct hourglass figure. She has a thick and lovely long black hair tied in a stylized low ponytail supposedly held together by two aqua elastics, which was unfortunately not captured again in here as she's still wearing irregular black elastics. In the movie, she also wears a blue headband with a sapphire set in a golden frame which again was not captured correctly here since she was given a purple gem instead, which is actually better than the orange gem placed on her deluxe Saiyan doll version. Her hairstyle is nicely done with her hair texture soft and smooth, but is slightly stiff on the bottom to capture the waves on her hair, and her hair also has a nice sheen to it. Her overall makeup is exactly the same as the previously released dolls, except for the lip color, which should have been red for movie accuracy. As for her jewelries, she sports a large golden earrings and a golden choker, which are very movie accurate. For her outfit, she wears a turquoise voodlaw with long puffy harem pants and a tube top revealing her midriff and navel with sewn in sleeves. This time, they placed filigree designs on the entire outfit to match all the current Disney princesses outfits released for this year. Though not movie accurate, I am okay with it since the glitter details are finally executed and sticks real well, which doesn't get to your hands. I do appreciate that Disney did not put a gem on her chest area, which they have been doing in the previously released dolls, since her on-screen top doesn't really have any gems at all. Both the top and pants can be removed and replaced with a velcro located on the back. In the movie, she wears a gold slipper-like shoes with the tips that curl inward, and for the first time, the color is now correctly done since she was given a gold color instead of the usual blue shade seen in the previous doll which makes me really satisfied with this released version of Jasmine. Jasmine was provided with extra outfits in this release which includes her red slave outfit and the purple outfit she was seen wearing when his father is going to announce Aladdin to be Jasmine's betrothed up to the time Aladdin was exposed to be merely Aladdin by Jafar. The red slave outfit includes a red top and harem pants, which looks exactly as her turquoise outfit in terms of cut and design. It is packed with glitters. Though I am not a fan of it, I am still pleased to have this outfit inclusion. Just like her turquoise outfit, this red version also has a velcro on the back for securing the outfit. One detail missing though is the waistline area should have been light red in color, but overall is still close enough to the movie counterpart. Hopefully though, Disney will release a doll fit for this red outfit since her hair is placed in a high ponytail when she was seen wearing it, and switching this outfit to her current doll doesn't really give on-screen accuracy unless you plan on undoing her hairstyle to match her on-screen outfit. As for her purple dress, it is made of satin fabric which is completely packed with glitters. It has a fold-over section at the neckline which is a lighter shade of purple and has long puffy sleeves on the lower section. It has a sapphire gem right below the bodice, which I kind of wish they have used this gem on her headband as well to match it correctly. It also has a sheer organza overskirt, which overall adds to on-screen movie accuracy. The dress is plain and simple, with minimal aesthetics, which actually appeals to my own personal taste. Just like all the other outfits included here, there is a velcro attachment located on the back. The set also comes with a stand, which is turquoise in color, 
and has some gold section on the neck and the sand and base itself is gold in color. Interestingly enough, they modified the stand for the sole purpose of using it for all the outfits by adding an additional hole situated on the mannequin's left side so you can use this stand to display her red slave outfit as you see fit. It looks somehow odd though, seeing just one stand on the lower leg portion, but hey, it works. This addition is a simple element addition but is greatly appreciated for display purposes. Articulation-wise, Aladdin can rotate his head at 360 degrees, same as the shoulder joint, can raise shoulder sideways up to 90 degrees, has elbow bent at 90 degrees. His hips allow movement forward and back, has side-to-side -side movements, and rubber click knees limiting knee articulation. As for Jasmine, she has more articulated joints as exemplified by the ability to bend the neck up and down, has good side-to-side -to -side movements, and she can rotate her head at 360 degrees. She can also rotate her shoulder at 360 degrees but is impeded by the sleeves on her tube top. She can raise her arm sideways at about 90 degrees, has single jointed elbow that can bend at 90 degrees, and also has some hyperextension on her elbow joint. She has a standard wrist articulation that can bend, extend, and swivel. On her hip joint, she can move her entire leg forward and has good range going backwards. She can also do the splits and she also has rubber click knees which I hope gets updated back to a standard knee articulation since it really limits the doll's possibility function. Unlike Aladdin, Jasmine cannot stand alone due to her ankle is tilted forward and is also due to the rubbery soft material of the entire legs and feet, offering no stability to her ankle joints. Overall, I am pleased with Aladdin and Jasmine doll figures since Aladdin had a hair update and Jasmine's outfit details closely match her on-screen counterpart. Also, I am really pleased with Jasmine's outfit inclusions on this set since it sounded like my previous concerns were heard by Disney, such as removing the gem on her top, the inclusion of a gold shoe, and to add to my disbelief, they added not just one, but two other outfits in this entire package, which makes me an overall satisfied customer. Though, if I will be honest to myself, since this release is really for Aladdin, Disney should have opted for Aladdin's prince costume instead of giving all the credits to Jasmine. My other few gripes though, first, that it doesn't include the genie's lamp in the set which is a missed opportunity since it played an important role in the storyline and is an iconic symbol of this film. And most importantly, they forgot to include the magic carpet who played part in the overall success of Aladdin's quest. If you bought the deluxe singing Jasmine doll, it shouldn't be a problem though since that set has the genie's lamp and the magic carpet on it. Though I truly feel the set feels incomplete for not having the magic carpet and the genie's lamp on it. Minor complaints though and shouldn't hinder you from purchasing this deluxe doll gift set if you are a longtime fan of this movie franchise and is highly recommended for all Disney enthusiasts. Next video will contain the rest of the dolls and inclusions, so keep an eye on my next video update. Have a magical day. Bye!